my name is Taylor Ivey and this is my introduction to public speaking and formative speech and today I will be talking to you about the primary vaccines for canines and the visit visits you will go through during this process. So these vaccines will cover parvo, leptovir, lepto, <laughs> distemper, advent, no virus, which is actually a type of kennel cough, which I will get into talking about in just a second. Kennel cough and rabies. Par parvovirus is transmitted by the fecal and it makes the dogs very dehydrated because it makes them have diarrhea uncontrollably. And to the right and on these pictures, this is actually a picture of parvovirus or an example of what par parvovirus actually looks like. And then just below that, this is a dog that's actually infected by parvovirus, and you can see has he has an IV catheter, and and you can also tell that he does not feel good. These viruses and infections do it just makes the dogs feel bad, and sometimes they don't make it through. So we want to make sure that your animals are protected as much as possible, and we do that by vaccinating them. Rabies is, of course, we. We've all heard about rabies and what happens, and we know of Old Yeller, but we do vaccinate dogs on a daily basis where I work at, which is at the vet clinic in Magnolia, and it's actually transmitted by the saliva in effective animals, which bites would get the saliva of those dogs in the system of your dog. Um, leptovirus is actually spread by water that other animals had pee pooped in drank out of before usually wildlife and then your dog goes by and drinks out of that water they can get this and it'll make them feel sick and we'll have to treat them distemper is caught by anything that's infected been touched by been around any other dog it's very contagious and then you have kennel cough kennel cough any of the kennel coughs make them just coughing anything like that it's kind of like um, influenza it's not influenza but kind of like in us it makes us cough and just not feel good at all and they get it by other dogs that ha also have kennel cough so to explain a little bit more on vaccines I'm gonna have this video help me because he explains it pretty good Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Kramer, and people ask me all the time if they really need to get their pets vaccinated. The answer is easy. Yes, your pets really need to be vaccinated. But even after hearing the answer, a lot of people still have more questions. Mainly why, what risks are involved, and what kind of vaccines do they really need? Most of these pet owners have been on the internet and have read all kinds of conflicting information. A lot of it's misguided and not based on science. So let's look at the facts about vaccinations and just what they are. <laughs> Vaccines are products designed to trigger protective immune responses in pets. This gets their bodies ready and able to fight future infections when they come in contact with these disease-causing agents. Vaccines usually prevent certain diseases altogether, but if a vaccinated pet does come down with a disease for which it has already been vaccinated, the pet's illness is often much less severe. That's why vaccines are so important. If an unvaccinated pet gets one of these diseases, treatment can become very expensive and most of these diseases can be fatal despite treatment. Very young puppies and kittens are highly susceptible to infectious diseases because their immune systems are not fully mature. To provide optimal protection against disease in the first few months of life, a series of vaccinations are scheduled by your veterinarian, usually three to four weeks apart. For most puppies and kittens, the final vaccination in the series is given at about four months of age. Remember, an incomplete series of vaccinations may lead to incomplete protection, making puppies and kittens vulnerable to infection. And once you decide to get your puppy vaccinated and protect him from anything that might he might come across and get, you're off to the doctor. So you want to stop, start your puppy off at six to eight weeks old. Um, older dogs are vaccinated all the time, even if they're 
a few years old up to one year old but it's a different process and I'm not getting into that right now I'm just talking about the primary puppy vaccines so they will only get their DA2 shot which is all the primary stuff that I talked about except for a certain kennel cough which is an oral vaccine and the rabies those two they will get when they're a little bit older which would be about they would probably get it on their last visit their third visit but for the first two visits they'll only get a DA2 shot which is distemper parvo lepto and all of those good things <laughs> and after your first visit you'll come back every three weeks until three visits are completed so you'll come at six to eight weeks old and then your second visit they'll be nine to twelve ten eleven weeks old and then your third visit they'll be 12 to 14 weeks old which is old enough to get the rabies and the oral kennel cough vaccine and while you're there they will also the doctor will also collect a fecal sample which might look kind of mean but we're just checking for intestinal parasites that might cause problems with your puppy and some of these include giardia coccidia whipworms hookworms tapeworms and roundworms giardia coccidia and hookworms primarily cause really runny nasty diarrhea so if your puppy's having any of those problems then that might be a cause whipworms tapeworms and roundworms really cause stinky nasty poop roundworms usually puppies that have really big tummies and you're not really gaining any weight anywhere else. They usually have roundworms. And that's what we call by wormy puppies. They're, they usually have roundworms. But we will ch check for these. And if your puppy does have them, we'll treat it with some dewormer. And your doctor will also, also start your puppy on the correct heartworm flea and tick intestinal parasite preventative for your specific case. So there are some that don't do ticks if your dog doesn't go outside very much or in the grass very much or your yard is treated for ticks you won't have to really need treatment for ticks preventative for ticks if all of the areas that your dog is around is already treated so you don't need to pay for the extra cost of getting that if you don't need it so your doctor will talk to you about that and if your dog doesn't like treats, he, he will do a topical one so that you don't have to give your dog a pill every month. Or if maybe some of us are forgetful, then once the dog is so old, they can actually get a shot that prevents heartworms. And then you can do a topical or little pill that does flea and ticks only. But he will talk to you the, about those and get you through that. So the very one on the left is actually a hookworm egg. The, this is what we see when we look through the microscope at your dog's poop. <laughs> it's kind of weird to think that we look at your dog's poop. That, that's how we tell what's going on with your dog. And this, the second one from the right that has these little polars on the end of them, that is a whipworm. Um, and then the next one, that's a roundworm. And to the very right that's coccidia so these are actually all on the same size scope so that you can actually see the different sizes and compare them so roundworm which is the third one from the right um, it actually looks a lot like coccidia which is the very right one but it's a lot larger you can see it a whole lot easier and when you're looking for coccidia and your doctor thinks your dog might have coccidia the techs and assistants will be looking at a little bit different microscope intensity to look for specific things but once you're done and we have treated your dog and she or he got all his vaccines you are all clear and after that third visit after they get their rabies bordetella and they're all done with their boosters you're all clear and the only thing you have left is to make sure they stay on heartworm flea and tick preventative and their intestinal parasite preventative the year round until you come back for your next visit, next visit which we will check for more intestinal parasites to make sure that that preventative is doing its job and we can talk about different preventative if you need it or any problems that's going on with your dog and thank you for attention your attention and this is my 
informative speech for introduction to public speaking.